Welcome to the annual Let Freedom Ring celebration. Jointly hosted by the Kennedy Center and Georgetown University as part of the university's ongoing Let Freedom Ring initiative, honoring the legacy of Dr. King. Please welcome the Let Freedom Ring Celebration Choir, the Let Freedom Ring Band, the Georgetown Jazz Ensemble, and Georgetown Department of Performing Arts and soloist Philip Carter. And in his 15th year, please welcome Reverend Nolan Williams, Jr., the Let Freedom Ring Celebration's Music Director. I want to believe my voice counts, but there is so much injustice. And so Black Lives Matter, the women's movement, the March for Science, the DACA protests, it's all so much. Do you ever feel saturated? Do our marches make a difference? I know my vote counts. Alabama represents. Well, it's not like injustice is new. Americans have been marching and protesting long before today, and I bet the leaders of the Civil Rights Movement felt defeated sometimes too. Yeah, 50 years ago, in his very last speech, King said that in all the times he could have lived, he would choose the present. <laughs> now that's a strange statement to make. Our world is all messed up. Our nation is sick. But, he said, somehow I know that only when it's dark enough can you see the stars. Mm. And I see God working in this period in a way that men, people, in some strange way are responding. Something is happening in our world. Ferguson, Flint, Michigan. The masses of people are rising up. Orlando, Florida. And the cry is always the same. We want to be free. To be people without fear, to feel safe. He said it is no longer a choice between violence and nonviolence in this world. It is non-violence or non-existence. Well, I wish I lived in a different time. King said the time is now that America has not been true to what she said on paper. And the same is true today. We are not all equal. We're still fighting for our rights. Trans folk are afraid to use public restrooms. Families are under threat of deportation. Too many people are poor, losing health care, even homeless in the wealthiest country in the world. More people died at the hands of police in 2017 than the number of black people who were lynched in the worst year of Jim Crow. Yet, only 12 officers were charged with a crime related to a shooting death. Black, black men, men are being killed, killed by police. Black women, trans women, black lives are right. And as King said, the issue is injustice. From here to Ferguson, the time has come to stand for justice, equality. Keep watching, keep fighting, don't be distracted by agendas of those who won't concede. America is the right to protest for rights. He, he said, said, let us develop a kind of dangerous unselfishness. The question is not, if I stop to help someone, what will happen to me? The question is, what will happen to them? We've got to live up to America's promise. What would King say today? In 1968, he said, the media is focused on the broken glass, not the sanitation worker. Contemporary example. Historic example. The issue in 1968 is the refusal of Memphis to be fair with its public service. Contemporary <laughs> example. Puerto Rico. Give them relief. In 1968, he said we need to support black institutions. And we still do today. And to all this, we say no end fighting. Because, because the, the issue, issue is, is injustice. injustice. It's time we deliver the rights of America. Has
Please welcome Emmanuel Thomas, a senior in Georgetown College, majoring in psychology with a minor in music, who will be giving tonight's invocation. Lord, we come to you today to give you thanks. Thank you for this exciting celebration, which we are all blessed to witness. As we reflect on the spirit of Dr. King, let us remember his legacy of love, peace, and his dedication to social justice. May that legacy of selflessness and of service continue to be shown through John Thompson Jr. and his unending commitment to justice. We thank you for your love that is epitomized through the works of Steve Park and we ask that you grant Little Lights Urban Ministries prosperity and longevity in their devotion to underserved DC youth. Please shower your marvelous blessings on Vanessa Williams, Nolan Williams Jr., and let the Freedom Ring choir this evening. Finally, Lord, we ask that you bless each person here. Please touch our hearts so that we are motivated in our personal, and collective dedication to being men and women for others. These things we ask, amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Deborah Rudder, President of the Kennedy Center. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kennedy Center. This is such a special evening. It's just my fourth, but the 16th of this partnership that we have with Georgetown. It's such an important evening for us to come together in a way to start the year, to remember who we are, why we are, and who we are together. I am really thrilled that we have this great partnership with President Jack DeJoya and Georgetown and to know of their year-round programming, Let Freedom Ring. And I say congratulations to Nolan Williams and these incredible performers on this stage. I have goosebumps listening and watching, to them, watching them this evening. It is important for us every day, but especially to take a day like today to re recognize and honor those who embody the ideals of courage, freedom, justice, service, and gratitude. We here at the Kennedy Center believe those are ideals of John F. Kennedy, our namesake, but certainly they are also of Dr. Martin Luther King. Every day we must honor and treasure the hope and compassion that is so necessary for us in our world today. And we applaud all of those who break down barriers in pursuit of a more just and equitable society. Tonight, we have a wonderful honoree, the recipient of the John Thompson Jr. Legacy Award, Steve Park, congratulations. We're so thrilled to be here to honor you somewhere. Here. Tonight's program is, as for all of you who have been here many times before, a part of the Kennedy Center's Millennium Stage. Every single night, every single night at six o'clock, we have a free program. Not always quite as glamorous and spectacular as this, but every night a very special program. It was started over 20 years, and I really want to call out and express my gratitude to our former chairman uh, and the founder of Millennium Stage, Jim Johnson. It is his dream that we would do this for our community and we would also stream it live. So think of the millions of people who are watching us every day and especially still tonight. What a great, great gift. From the very beginning, we have had some generous donors who have made this possible. So in a moment, I'm gonna ask you to join me in saying thank you to Target and to the J. Willard and LSS Marriott Foundation for making this possible. Thank you. People ask me all the time if the arts are a dying commodity, if people will just stay home and watch it online. And I say no, for reasons just as we are experiencing here tonight. There is nothing like coming together to celebrate, to think, to believe, and to honor people um, such as Steve Park. It is fantastic that we have these great young people who are performing and that we have a community that supports one another. So thank you all for being here. And I'd like you now to welcome um, Nestor Andino, district team leader for Target. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Target, I'd like to thank our gracious host, David Rubenstein, Deborah Rudin, William Doyle, and Dr. John DeJoy, and of course, everyone at the Kennedy Center and Georgetown University. It's inspiring to be here tonight with people from all walks of life as we celebrate Dr. King, his life, his work, and his legacy that fuels the American spirit of freedom quality, and service. At Target, a reputation to build our legacy of service, service to our guests, to our teams, and to our communities. 
Since 1946, we have given 5% of our profits to the communities where we live, work, serve, and play. Beyond the dollars, our giving also includes the time, talent, and expertise of, talent, of uh, target leaders and team members who volunteer more than one million hours each of the last four years. Whether we're donating food to the hungry, res uh, responding to disasters, large and small, or building playgrounds in underserved neighborhoods, our team is ready to roll up their sleeves and land a hand wherever is needed. Dr. King once said, our goal is to create a beloved community, and this will require a qualitative change in our souls as well as a quantitative change in our lives. Each of us can make a difference within ourselves, and all of us can make a difference in the life of others. On behalf of everyone at Target, thank you for letting us join in the celebration of Dr. King and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Reverend Nolan Williams. Good evening. Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. Good evening. What's up, y'all? Happy Martin Luther King Jr. birthday. <laughs> It's amazing to think that were King alive today, he would be celebrating his 89th year. Um, it was 15 years ago that I first launched my company, New Works Productions, with a vision for producing inspirational arts programming that leverages the power of music and the arts for community engagement and social good. This Let Freedom Ring celebration was one of the first projects that we took on, and for 15 years, it has been a sincere honor to partner with Georgetown University and the Kennedy Center to curate and create music for this amazing concert, honoring the life and legacy of Dr. King. On April 3rd, 1968, Dr. King addressed a capacity crowd at the Mason Temple Church of God in Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. He ended his speech with these words, like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain and I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. Those are chilling words, huh? The chilling words. I mean, he delivered those the night before his untimely assassination. We open this concert today with a piece that I was commissioned by Georgetown to compose for this occasion, and the piece is titled The Promised Land, in parentheses, someday. It draws inspiration from these final words of Dr. King. But I want you to hear these song lyrics again. Sometimes I close my eyes to pray, to lift my sight beyond the fray. I see the world a better place, the promised land it's meant to be someday. I've been to the mountaintop, seen the promised land. Though I may not get there with you, don't you stop till we as a people get to the promised land. These words remind us that the mantle for social justice is passed on like a torch to every successive generation. It is our call to do our part. And when we have done our part, then we pass on the call to action 
to the generation that comes behind us. Earlier in this same mountaintop speech, King also uttered these words. This is what King said. All we say to America is, be true to what you said on paper. That embedded in our country's founding documents are certain promises like freedom of assembly and freedom of speech and freedom of the press and the right and the right to protest for right, whether you're standing or taking a knee. And so let's this be just another King celebration where we come in and feel good and leave without a sense of responsibility. Here's my call to action to you. We can't let up or let go until we push our nation to keep its promises for all its citizens, regardless of race, regardless of gender, regardless of socioeconomic status, regardless of sexuality, regardless of where they come from, how they got here, or how they worship. Hear me today. It is up to us to continue King's work, to march and to fight, to protest and to resist, to make our voices heard, to speak truth to power, to speak right in the face of wrong, and to speak love in the face of hate and bigotry and misogyny and xenophobia and every other phobia and ism that seems to be emboldened in our times. So, just in case you missed it, with all the nice music, the singing, and the catchy beat, that's what the opening song was all about. Now more than ever, every one of us must use whatever power, whatever leverage we have to push our nation towards its promise of becoming a more perfect union. The great American composer and artist Duke Ellington understood this in his time. In the final years of his life, he leveraged the platform that he had garnered throughout his career to present three sacred concerts that spoke to the heart of what the Duke believed. Embedded in the second of these concerts, the Duke composed a suite of songs all pertaining to the theme of freedom. The Left Freedom Ring Choir and Band, and aren't they amazing today? Can we just? Each year since 2003, Georgetown University has presented the John Thompson Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award to an individual or a group who has demonstrated outstanding service in Georgetown's Jesuit tradition of being women and men for others. The award now celebrates the extraordinary contributions of Washington, D.C.'s most inspirational community leaders, bearing the name of a man who himself became one such inspirational leader when he came to Georgetown as the head men's basketball coach in 1972. Coach John Thompson, Jr. set an example for all of us. Born in the heart of Washington, D.C., John Thompson, Jr. matched his extraordinary ambition with unparalleled commitment and hard work. I lived in Frederick Douglass Projects on Alabama Avenue for 10 years, but I had every single thing I wanted. I never wanted anything that I didn't have, because I knew damn well I couldn't go in the house and say, give me a bicycle. <laughs> you know? Leading his high school to multiple championships, he earned a scholarship to Providence College. He went on to the NBA and played for championship Celtics teams and later he would find new success coaching basketball at Georgetown. They gave me an opportunity and it had to be a conscientious effort on the part of them in 1972 to hire an African-American. You don't just say come in 
uh, with your resume and come in and go before a committee. Oh, bingo, here we got this black man. But when they got me and hired me, they permitted me to be me. Coach was famous for keeping a deflated basketball on his desk to remind his players that the game wouldn't last forever. You don't want young people to think the sum total of their life is nine or eight pounds of air in a basketball. One day that ball is going to stop bouncing. The air <laughs> is going to leave that ball. So you use the game to prepare yourself for life after. He transformed his students. He transformed his team, bringing a new level of excellence to Georgetown basketball and ensuring that 97% of his students graduated. In 1989, the NCAA put forward Proposition 42, a proposal regarding eligibility for participation in athletics, which would disproportionately harm students from disadvantaged backgrounds. Coach Thompson became one of its most visible opponents, leading the fight against it, walking off the court in protest, and boycotting two games. He helped bring the issue to national attention and eventually led the NCAA to modify the proposition. Today, his legacy lives on. Because he stood tall, so too have countless young men. I think it's more important in life for those kids when they leave here and they use the good education they got here at Georgetown and they go out in the world and apply what they did and they try to help somebody else or try to educate somebody else. The John Thompson Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award has created new ways for Georgetown to serve our community as women and men for others. Ladies and gentlemen, John J. DeJoya, the 48th president of Georgetown University. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be with all of you tonight as we gather to honor the extraordinary legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We celebrate his life of service and his call for justice by recognizing those within our community and our city who embody his enduring spirit and commitment. Tonight we recognize the profound impact of Coach John Thompson Jr., of the ways he embodies the spirit of Dr. King here in our city and on the larger questions of racial justice, equity, equality, and opportunity in our nation. In this moment, as we reflect on this legacy, we celebrate a leader who has demonstrated an exceptional commitment to service and to the well-being of our communities here in Washington, D.C. Fifty years ago, in his last public address, the day before he was assassinated, Dr. King spoke of a world confronting many challenges, of a nation crying out for freedom, of courageous communities working together to support, to achieve unprecedented change. Something is happening in our world, he told the crowd on April 3rd, 1968. Something is happening in our world. Each of us has a responsibility to grapple with issues of justice, equality, dignity, and fairness, to seek a better world, to build compassionate communities where all of our people are enabled to flourish. Dr. King called us to this responsibility 50 years ago. We are still called with ever more urgency today. In the words of Dr. King in Memphis, quote, let us rise up tonight with a greater readiness. Let us stand with a greater determination. And let us move on in these powerful days, these days of challenge, to make America what it ought to be. We have an opportunity to make America a better nation." Close quote. Tonight, we honor an individual who has dedicated himself to fulfilling this urgent responsibility, our 2018 recipient of the John Thompson 
Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award, Mr. Steve Park. Mr. Park serves as the founder and executive director of Little Lights Urban Ministries. As you will see in our film in just a moment, under Mr. Park's leadership, Little Lights seeks to empower members of our city community through economic, social, educational, and faith initiatives, from mentorship and academic tutoring to summer programs and employment assistance. More than 900 children and families have been impacted by Steve Park, Mary Park, his wife, and the entire team at Little Lights and it's our privilege to recognize their outstanding work at this very special gathering. So it's my pleasure now to share a short film about the extraordinary contributions of Mr. Park and Little Lights Urban Ministries. I think there's a part of DC that is still, I think, often ignored. And what Little Lights tries to do is we try to go into these public housing communities like Potomac Gardens, Hopkins, and Bedding Terrace, and to do it long term. A lot of kids don't have time to do homework once they get home. A lot of kids don't have anyone to help them with homework when they get home. But when they come to Little Lights, it's a place for them to come and get, you know what I'm saying, get love. Parents sort of rely on us to be able to help their kids. All of that put together, I just think, makes a major impact to help raise that child from, from some challenging situations to, I believe, a place where they can thrive. Through our Family Center, we help people look for jobs, help them with their resume. The Clean Green Team, which is the landscaping social enterprise, so we do job training as well as ongoing employment for people in the community. We also try to hire as many of the residents that we serve. We just try to create the safety net, uh, try to provide a, yeah, a caring place for both adults and children to come to. It's one of the greatest challenges that we need to figure out how do we improve uh, the whole living situation for those who are in some challenging uh, lifestyles that are here now, how do we help to raise them up without pushing them out? I first heard about Little Lights when I was eight. Steve was like consistent and then like he brought volunteers to come. And then it started to be like an everyday thing. So I think the place in the community that Little Lights hold, that's the part, sort of the glue that helps some of them. Even if they go on and move out of the community, they never forget the things that they learn within Little Lights or the people that cared about them or a mentor that they had that believed in them. It's not a lot of words to describe him because I've never met anybody like this guy. The, the work that he is doing, I, I just believe, is, is monumental. I knew right away when I met him, I could tell his heart, soul, and everything was in it. Completely committed to these communities. It's a blessing to, to receive this honor and that you feel, yeah, a greater responsibility to be a, a better leader. He has little lights here so that he can fight for the youth in this community on Capitol Hill. He has a heart for people, certainly for the kids, but not just for the kids, I think just for people. Just to see him and see his heart and know that he is the real deal when it comes to this. Mr. Park, on behalf of all of us at Georgetown, let us express our gratitude for your service and leadership. And now please join me and Coach Thompson in recognizing the recipient of the 2018 John Thompson Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award, Mr. Steve Park.
As a multi-platinum recording artist and star of television, film, and the Broadway stage, she is one of the most respected performers in entertainment today. Throughout her 35-year career, she has scored numerous number one and top 10 albums and singles. She's been honored with seven NAACP Image Awards, as well as a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Along the way, she's received several Grammy, Emmy, SAG, and Tony nominations for her critically acclaimed body of work. Her hit single, Colors of the Wind, from Disney's Pocahontas, won the Grammy, Golden Globe, and Oscar for Best Original Song. She's also a fashion designer and a New York Times best-selling author. As a strong advocate for equal rights, she received the Ally for Equality Award from the Human Rights Campaign for her various humanitarian contributions over the years. Please welcome the exceptionally talented Ms. Vanessa Williams.
It's a perfect night to talk about dreaming. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I thank this magnificent chorus behind me that I'm going to sing with uh, in just a few. Uh, but it's such a special day, and I'm honored to be here. And uh, we're going to do uh, some abbreviated uh, songs about love, about uh, work, and uh, about the power uh, that we all possess here tonight. This next song was one that um, was a big hit for me back in the 90s, and it's appropriately called Love Is. It's a river that circles the earth A beam of light shining to the edge of the universe It conquers all It changes everything They say it's a blessing They say it's a gift They say it's a miracle And I believe that it is, it conquers all, but it's a mystery. Love breaks your heart, love takes no less than everything. So easily This world we live in In this place where we live In the blink of an eye, babe The darkness slips in The light of the world Unites the lovers
the Reverend Leo Colon on vocals and piano. Keith Robinson yet again on the guitar. This uh, next song was uh, another one that's very appropriate because it talks about our earth and about our Native American people and to not judge people by the color of their skin. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to sing this winning song in 1996 at the Academy Awards when it won. And this is from the animated movie called Pocahontas, and this is Colors of the Wind. <laughs>
all the while Life keeps rushing by us Hold it now and don't That was uh, another very appropriate song. As you can say, I, 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 I tailored my set to uh, what I felt was uh, appropriate. That was uh, from Into the Woods that I played The Witch uh, on Broadway back in 2002. For all those who saw that, thank you. Uh, but a very, very powerful song yet again, because children listen to everything you say and do. Um, I'm going to do uh, a song for me, but it is by a woman who was uh, a fierce advocate uh, and was one of my mentors and, and idols. Uh, I got a chance to do a, a Broadway show called After Midnight, which was a celebration of the Harlem Renaissance, and uh, this particular song was one that I got a chance to sing in the show. This is by Lena Horne, uh, made famous by her, and this is called Stormy Weather. around and I'm still feeling bad Rain pouring down Blinding every hope I had This pitter and pattering Beating and splattering Tries me mad Love, 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 love This misery is just too much for No sun up in the sky Stormy weather Since my man and I ain't 
together Keeps raining all the time Life is bare Gloom and misery everywhere Stormy weather Just can't keep my poor self together keeps raining all the time the time so weary all the time when he went away the blues walked in and met me if he stays away Old rocking chair will get me. All I do is pray the Lord above will let me walk in the sun once more. Can go on. Everything I have is gone. Stormy weather. amazing activist. So I mentioned uh, After Midnight, which uh, again uh, celebrated the, the music of the Harlem Renaissance, and we talked tonight about Duke Ellington, and you already heard a piece. Uh, tonight I'm bringing out uh, a phenomenal talent who was also in After Midnight with me, and she is going to be doing one of uh, Duke Ellington's uh, famous pieces called Creole Loves Call. So ladies and gentlemen, from After Midnight, the Broadway show, here is a special treat for you, Miss Carmen Ruby Floyd singing Creole Love Song by Duke Ellington.
Miss Carmen Ruby Floyd. Now I have to brag. <laughs> Carmen is about to take over the role of Hello Dolly on Broadway as Bernadette's understudy and her opening night is February, February 22nd. If you want to see Carmen as Hello Dolly, February 22nd, go to Broadway and she will be starring in Hello Dolly, yay! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and on that note, we got more work to do. You ready to hit it? karaoke time. I know you know the words, so hopefully you'll sing along. And this is Save the Best for Last. Yeah. Sometimes the snow comes down in June. 
Sometimes the sun goes round the moon. I see the passion in your eyes. Sometimes it's all a big surprise. Cause there was a time when all I did was wish you'd tell me this is love. It's not the way I hoped or how I planned, but somehow it's enough. But now we're standing face to face. Isn't this world a crazy place? Just when I thought our chance had passed, you go and say the best. Silly girl had set you free. Wondered how you made it through. I wondered what was wrong with you. Cause how could you give your love to someone else and share your dreams with me? Sometimes a standing face to face isn't this world a crazy place it's when I thought our chance had passed you go and say the best for me songs to do <laughs> with the Let Freedom Ring Choir. Uh, so it's such a delight for a singer to be able to sing with such a fantastic choir behind me. And uh, I thank Georgetown. My brother went to Georgetown, so I was supposed to say Saxahoya. Okay. I said it. Chris, I did it. <laughs> uh, of course, I went to SU. I went to Syracuse. So we were your arch... I know, I know. It was back in the day. Big East was strong. Now we're at the ACC anyway. But, uh, but uh, the glory days. Um, but it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. And this next song is uh, one that I'm going to do with the choir. And uh, it is uh, a song that was written by Rob Mappis, who was here for many years for the Kennedy Center Honors, and wrote this, and I did this for... Um, my album, uh, the last album that I did, um, called The Real Thing. And this is the choral version of it. And it's a song about if there were no music and no song. Stretching on and on and on Then my heart would barely beat Then my soul that would not 
not speak if there were no Then my life would be a lie if there were no So I'd like to finish out this, uh, this evening with a song, another song that we all know that we grew up singing. And I think, again, it is so appropriate. All these songs are appropriate tonight. <laughs> it is so appropriate and timely. And you can sing along if you'd like. It's called Let There Be Peace on Earth. <laughs> the peace on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with God as our father brothers all are we let us walk Step I take, let 
Thank you so much.